quite difficult to describe being world champion. Um, obviously all my life I've wanted to be world champion, I wanted to follow in my father's footsteps and the only thing, well, there's nothing really you can relate it to, I mean people want to win the lottery so much but really it doesn't come anything near to winning the world championship. I once asked the, the man that I deal with at the factory, you know, you know, why why do you all do this? You know, why do you all work so hard? And he said to me, he said, it's a there's a word in in English. And he said, I'm not very sure what it is. And then the next week he came back to me. He said it he said passion. He said that that's what it's about really, that it's not all about money. He said we have a passion for winning. Dougie's really done marvellous. It wasn't easy, as it wasn't for myself, for Dougie to continue the Lampkin name, but he's, he's surpassed everybody that's ridden. I've been involved in trials pretty much all my life. Um, the first event that I ever went to was when I was six weeks old, I went to the Scottish Six Days and pretty much every weekend since then I've been to watch my father and the rest of the family competing. I, I did have a successful schoolboy career, I was B-class British champion and also A-class British champion. When Dougie was a schoolboy, his riding wasn't particularly brilliant. Uh, Graham Jarvis, a lad who now is fourth in the world, used to regularly beat him. It wasn't so Doug's lack of trying, it just that things didn't come so naturally to him earlier on. And uh, at times he did try far too hard and didn't let it come naturally. Um, pretty much after the schoolboys, uh, I decided that I wanted to um, try it to the top level at trials and we did the European Championship when I was 17 and I ended up winning the season. Um, so really the European Champion in, when I was 17, I thought that's, that could be the chance that I get to become World Champion in the future.
My first big break in trials would have to be the European Championship, it led to a lot of things. Um, I got beat a contract straight away and really it just gave me a very good confidence boost for the rest of my career. When W won his first World Champ Championship event in Halton Towers in 94 near Manchester, I mean I think that was very very special for W and, and for all of his team. With my family being involved in motorcycle trials for so long, um, really they've been through everything, all the pressures and all the competitions and they've helped me a great deal with uh, my confidence boosting and my training and really everything around it and John helping me understand the bikes and really it's been a complete family effort.
Okay. Lorkin est un concurrent britannique dont le père avait été champion du monde en 1973 et 1975. Lorkin au terme de ce premier tour. Il semble bien que.
Marquez cette sixième édition du Prix international de Montmartre. winning my first world championship which was indoors in 97 um, that was fantastic really um, but then to win the outdoors I think the outdoor meant most to me uh, and I think it still does it seems to be more recognized than the actual indoors but having said that to win in both categories is really good and it gives you to win the indoor championship and then move on to the outdoor championship your, very, your confidence is very high for Dougie to be number one in the world and for him to be world champion is obviously very, very good for Beta, myself in this country, and it's obviously very good for Beta worldwide. I think a lot of people look up to the number one rider, and especially younger people, um, and it's obviously very, very good publicity to have him riding the bike. Um, with regard to, to him being part of the family, um, I mean, I don't think any of us can say enough, really. I mean, we're all very, very proud of him. Um, and I think, you know, ever since he, he really started in schoolboy trials or when he won his first European Championship. 
and then went on to winning the World Championship. I mean, he just seems to have gone from strength to strength. And I said we're all simply just very proud of him. Of all the riders I've seen, both when I was riding and in present time, Dougie's got the best head on him that I've ever seen on a rider. There's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that that is his major asset. Although he's a fabulous rider, uh, his powers of concentration and the way that he adapts himself to every event is his is major point. <laughs> When I used to ride, obviously, as a youngster, you just took everything for granted. Went one day to the next, we had a blooming good time, and the, the trials were a sideline. Now it's a completely professional situation. Uh, there isn't such a thing really as having a good time till after the event. The riders are, without doubt, a lot more professional. There's a lot more at stake. And uh, really, it's a different kettle of fish altogether to when I rode. Still very famous, as you can see. <laughs> I'm not interested at all, at all in riding myself. It's just something that I used to do, enjoyed ever so much, but I've never had the uh, inclination to start doing the pre-65s or the four-stroke trials. I still have time. I'm still only 26. To have Dougie as number one um, and been contracted to ride for the Beta Factory, I know they, they also are very, very proud of him. And he, Dougie has a mechanic, he's the number one mechanic at the factory who works constantly on his bikes, um, either when he's at the World Championship or, or when he's just in Italy. And they will just simply do anything for him. You know, if he wants a slightly different frame or a slightly different power from the engine or different brakes, you name it, you know, they will work and they will, they will try and get that for him. You've got to develop to try and get your bike better all the time. Um, I'm very lucky that um, one of my two teammates is Donato Miglio, an Italian rider who lives very close to the factory. And he does probably 90% of the developing. And when he feels that he's got something that could benefit me, then that's when I get to test it. So really, in developing you get a lot of good and a lot of bad, whereas I pretty much just get the good. Um, so that's been a, a great help over the last two years. We changed quite a few things, um, mainly slightly different clutch and I have different suspension settings and we work with the various factories to make these. Um, basically, they're the main things. I also have um, a different ignition which is um, so it revs harder and higher. And apart from that, variously different 
dimensions on the frame and on the fork angle and stuff like that, but nothing too serious. Uh, it's been good um, as the British Championship this year. Uh, obviously, to ride at home in front of all the fans and everything, they don't get so many chances to see you throughout the season. So it's a very important for me to ride the British Champion, British Championship for my fans and also for John with Beta. Um, and to tie it up again this year was a, a good achievement. I won five out of the six rounds and I was second in the other, so really I can't complain with the season. <laughs> Leder EM i øyeblikk og ligger ikke uh, kjennet av
I really enjoy riding the Trials Nation um, because there's all four riders normally we're uh, fighting against each other and I think when all four of us can get together with our minders and everything and work as one team um, I really do enjoy that day. Every year we get teams from uh, America, Canada, United States, Australia, Finland, really I think there's 22 countries come to ride in the trial and it takes a great effort from everybody and I think that's why it's such a good trial because it is supported by all the countries. I do enjoy the indoor circuit, sometimes it gets a little bit too much work and um, we can be riding two or three times per weekend, especially at the beginning of the year in the first three months. Um, so it is very tiring um, and you only really get about two weeks before the start of the outdoor season. So it's, it, it's very hard work but it also is very good. In Spain and France we're riding pretty much every large city and we can be getting between six and ten thousand people, sometimes even more and they're normally all covered on television. So I think it's um, raising the profile of trials especially. And I think it's also very good for the riders with the techniques and obviously you're under pressure riding in front of so many people so it's an ideal start into the Outdoor World Championship. Whenever I ride I'm out to win. Um, I don't like being beaten at all. Um, sometimes in indoor trials there's certain ways of doing things and you can be very extravagant but you can hurt yourself very easy. Um, I am slightly worried of hurting myself. Uh, if you have a big crash in an indoor trial you could be out for the rest of the year. So I wouldn't say I ride conservatively but I definitely, um, I definitely think about it a little bit more than some riders.
For Dougie to stop winning, I think, is very, very difficult. I think when sometimes you look on the outside, it, it possibly looks very easy. Um, I mean, especially when you watch him ride, everything looks effortless, like it does with any top sportsman. But when you see Dougie in day-to-day -day life, whether it be in England or, or abroad, uh, he just never stops, whether it be training in the gym or whether it be out on his bike. I mean, I, I think to try and sum it all up, I mean, this year when Dougie won the World Championship, He'd obviously ridden all year and he'd ridden very hard. And he travelled home from Norway. And what's the first thing he does when he gets home? He goes back out on his bike. <laughs> and it's not, um, it's not something I don't think he has to force himself, him, himself to do. It's just something that comes very naturally to him. I think he loves riding his bike. But um, as far as I'm concerned, there's nobody works harder. And I think that's why he achieves what he does. For Dougie, it's never ending. I must say, after the World Championship, he has about a month off where he just goes out with his mates, has a good time, uh, and he might have one or two drinks at Christmas, but it never stops for him. He's uh, 300 and at least 40 days a year person. Really, I think it's the number one team. I definitely have the best two minders in the world, and if you've got the best two minders in the world, then it's um, a good kickstart onto the, the season. I think I'm in front of the other teams before we even start. Yeah, obviously now I'm double world champion. Um, everyone's talking of the hat trick. Um, I myself would love to get a world championship hat trick. Um, the factory have already started working very hard. Um, I haven't stopped after the season. I'm working very hard for it. Um, there is pressure there, and there's pressure from other sponsors. But um, I try not to think about that because I want to be world champion three times in a row for myself as well as for the factory.